So today is the eighth day, uh, the eighth day that has some of its own unique elements, but is also connected to the rest of the holiday of Sukkot. And I want to address something that I imagine we all think about uh, from time to time. And that has to do with what if we are feeling something which is at odds with what we feel we're supposed to be feeling? What if the community is telling us today is a holiday and we're supposed to be happy? And yet for whatever reasons, perhaps personal grief, perhaps personal misfortune, perhaps anxiety, or we are feeling things other than joy. Perhaps we're feeling sadness. And what do we do with this? Especially when we might be getting the impression that that is at odds with the way that we're supposed to be feeling. If you ask people, what do you want for your loved ones? You ask parents, what do you want for your children? They will say some version of, I just want them to be happy. And we know that happiness is something that we want for ourselves and we want for others. And that certainly makes a great deal of sense. And yet at the same time, we also know that sadness is a part of life. And so this morning, I want to say a few words about sadness and what it means to recognize the reality of sadness, especially when our feelings of sadness, we may feel, diverge from what is expected, either from us internally, personally, or from others in whatever capacity. And I also want to explore what our tradition has to say about this. Now, you might be thinking, why am I addressing the topic of sadness at all on this festival? We're told to be ach sameach during the festival of Sukkot, altogether joyful. But this day, which, as we've said, is a little bit different and separate from the rest, does have a little bit of a different tone. This day of Shmini Atzeret is a plaintive day. Chazan Frieder will be chanting Tfilat Geshem, the prayer for rain. We recognize our vulnerability on this day. And of course, we will be saying the service of Yiskor, asking God to remember the neshamot, the souls of our loved ones who are no longer physically present among us as we remember. So there are other elements that intrude, that somehow assert themselves during this festival overall of simcha, of joy. And we know that the book of Kohelet, Ecclesiastes, is associated with this holiday and that there are various customs to read the book of Kohelet during this holiday. And perhaps one of the most often quoted passages of the book of Ecclesiastes begins, La Kolzman, the eight lechol chefetz tachat hashamayim, to everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to seek, a time to lose. And for our purposes of discussion this morning, eight leaf coat for eight leaf chok, a time to cry and a time to laugh. One way to understand this is that there are circumscribed times for crying and for laughing. There are circumscribed times for mourning and for celebration. And our tradition is telling us here are the boundaries for that. And we know that our tradition does impose certain boundaries on our emotions. There are sad days like Tish Abe'av, days of national mourning. And there are happy days. Most days are happy days that we celebrate Passover and Sukkot and Purim and others. We also know that there is a carefully calibrated approach to grief, to mourning, starting with Shiva, which is the most intense period of grief, and then gradually progressing through Shloshim, the next 30 days, and then the remainder of the first year, where the intensity grows less and less. But my question for each of us is, so then what? I mean, at the end of the year, are we expected to be happy? Are we expected to be anything like ach sameach, altogether joyous? I'm stating it in simplistic terms, but I believe that insofar as our tradition imposes certain boundaries when it comes to communal joy and when it comes to our own progression from deep grief to less grief, it leaves open the questions, what if we're not feeling it? 
What if we're not feeling anything like Ach Sameach, altogether joyful during the festival of Sukkot? What if we're not feeling ready to move on with our lives after the full year of mourning has elapsed? Now, I have said and I believe that there's enormous value in connecting individuals with a larger story. And there's enormous value in connecting us with the story of our people, our own sadness and our own joy as a people, which we connect to as individuals. And there is certainly, and many mental health professionals have noted value in laying out a framework for managing and navigating grief that gradually encourages the grief-stricken mourner to embrace the possibility of hope and even joy. But we also need to know that it is okay when our emotions don't conform to an external timetable or framework. The rabbis were very wise in understanding the human condition and the human spirit. And there's a beautiful expression, ein aninut ela balev, which means grief is in the heart. You cannot take someone's grief away from them. And there are times when even if the community is celebrating a joyous occasion, we're just not there. And there are times when even if our period of mourning officially has elapsed, we're just not there. Just because it's over doesn't mean that your feelings are necessarily going to conform. So I want to propose for us another way to understand eight leaf coat for eight leaf chot, a time to cry and a time to laugh. I suppose I propose that we understand it as follows. Sometimes we cry and sometimes we laugh. Whenever we cry, it is the time for crying. And whenever we laugh, it is the time for laughing. There are times when our sadness becomes unbearable, times that we know that we are sinking into a place that doesn't feel right or comfortable. And we certainly need to, during those times, seek out the support and help of family and friends and professionals as needed. And we also owe it to the people we love if we see them getting to that place or in danger of getting to that place that we say to them, you need help. And we hope that others will do the same for us. But that doesn't mean that we can schedule our sadness like we schedule professional meetings or social obligations. Often the time for crying is when we happen to be crying. And that's okay. Not only is our crying okay, but it can sometimes be illuminating. It can sometimes give us important information that we need in order to live our lives more fully. There is, I believe, a universal impulse to deny sadness, but that impulse often leads us to an unhealthy place. Our tradition recognizes that sadness is a part of life that we should not deny. I want to conclude by referring to a film that came out a few years ago. It was aimed at children, but it certainly is a film that I believe is illuminating for all ages. It's called Inside Out. It's an animated film. And what it does is it brings to life the emotions that are inside of us. So the emotions are portrayed by characters that are each vying to assert themselves within the individual. And the individual, the main character, is a young girl who moved to a new community with her family. And she was struggling with all of these mixed emotions. Each emotion was played by a different character. Sadness was often pushed aside. Joy wanted sadness to go away, to not assert itself. And Joy made sure that sadness was not felt by this young girl for very long. But sadness turns out to be the hero of the film. It is when the girl allows herself to fully feel her sadness of all of the losses that she has endured that she is finally able to cope with the challenges she needs to and she encourages her parents who are also pushing aside their less comfortable feelings to cope with what they need to cope with. There is a time for crying and a time for mourning and a time for sadness, 
whatever the reason, we should not have to stifle it because it makes the people around us uncomfortable. We should not have to cram it into a particular time frame. Let us affirm, even during this festival of joy, for ourselves and for others, that there is indeed a place for joy and for laughter, but also for sadness and for tears. Tachat under the heaven. Amen.